Sandy Charles with FanRag Sports, joined by Shotgun Spratling of USCFootball.com. Okay, Shotgun. With USC, strong start to this season. Are we seeing an elite team that's able to compete against Oregon and or Arizona now? Well, this is a basketball team that, you know, there were a lot of expectations prior to uh, some defections last year. You know, you had four people transfer, you had another two enter the NBA draft and go undrafted. So they thought they were going to have a lot of depth coming back, expecting some big things out of the team. And instead, it's, you know, pushed the, the roles up of some guys, some underclassmen uh, that were expected to get some minutes were, you know, kind of thrust into bigger roles. And, you know, they're kind of finding their way right now. And they've got off to a great start. And uh, I think they're just going to continue to get better throughout the season. That's one of the things that we've seen with the coaching staff here that Annie Enfield has uh, put together is that they've gone, the, the progressions from season to season, and then also the in-game progressions, especially for freshmen from the beginning of the year to the end of the year, has been you know, really noticeable. So I, I think that you know, this team's only going to get better as the season progresses. And you know, you're going to see some, some ups and downs more than likely. And, you know, it happens every year, especially when you're relying on younger players to, mm -hmm. to do a lot of the, the lifting for you. Um, but I think that they have the talent to compete with those teams, whether they finish up near the top like that. You know, at the beginning of last year, going into the Pac-12, you know, the first half of the Pac-12 schedule, it looked like, wow, this team, you know, can, can compete with anyone. And they had a little bit of a lull, and, you know, they ended up finishing, I think, five or, fifth or sixth in, in the conference, but, but made the NCAA tournament. And that's kind of the goal this year, is to finish somewhere, you know, in that upper half of the, mm -hmm. of the conference and then try to find your way back in the NCAA tournament when a lot of people were kind of doubting them coming in because of how many players that they did lose. Now, speaking of them losing all of those players and you did touch on the freshmen were just thrust into this role, uh, more playing time and just taking on a lot more. How have they really been adapting? Well, you see that they've brought in four freshmen uh, and also Charles Bugs, a graduate transfer mm -hmm. coming in from Minnesota, who actually had arthroscopic knee surgery uh, in, I believe, in September. So he's kind of slowly coming back and didn't play a game uh, earlier this week because they knew they wanted to save him because he's kind of got li limited minutes right now. So they saved him for the SMU game. And he had a big impact. He had, I think, mm -hmm. three blocks in you know, 10, 15 minutes coming off the bench and just trying to be an impact player in that in that's, uh, short span that he's able to play right now. But he's still getting adjusted to the system as a, he just uh, has entered into as a graduate transfer from Minnesota. So he, he has some experience, but, you know, still trying to find his way. Whereas the freshmen have kind of been thrown in and, you know, they've been going at it since, you know, since they signed, they've been, you know, they got the playbook and mm -hmm. have been thrown into the mix. Uh, you got Harrison Henderson who played for his first time a couple games back uh, when Bugs was unable to play. They, they threw Harrison Henderson. He got a couple minutes in there. He's gonna, a guy they're going to bring along slowly this season. Uh, he's going to be towards the end of the bench. But the other three freshmen, uh, Nick Rokosevich, Jonah Matthews, and DeAnthony Melton are all three guys that they expect big things out of this year. And maybe they weren't expected to have that role coming in, but now as Andy Enfield likes to say, we recruited you to play, so go out there and play. Uh, so those guys have been thrown into the mix, and, and you know they, they've really stepped up. Rakosovic is still struggling a little bit, having his freshman issues, and you know with foul trouble. A lot of times you'll see that with the bigs, but he's a Chicago guy. He, he's ready to uh, you know get in there and, and dive after loose balls and whatever it takes. So he's a guy that's going to do some of the small things for you. Uh, coming off the bench, he actually started earlier in the season because Benny Boatwright was out with it with an injury, uh, but he's been thrown in the mix, and we didn't really know that he was going to be having to play this many minutes early, but he's, he's done a good job with that, and you're only going to see him get better and better. Uh, and then the two freshman guards have just been outstanding so far. Um, Jonah Matthews struggled a little bit with his shot early, but he's a shooter and got back in the rhythm, and, and you know he's had a couple games. He had a career high last game, as did De'Anthony Melton, who had, I believe, 15 points. But De'Anthony Melton just kind of does everything on the court for you. He, he's got, uh, when you hear people talk about him, it's, it's defense that you hear about first. And you ask somebody, what makes him so good? He's got really long arms. Elijah Stewart was just long arms, long arms. Um, but he, it seems like he's covering half the court uh, with his arms. He's just, he, he has an uncanny knack for being able to be in the path of the ball, to get his hands, he gets so many deflections. And not all of those turn into turnovers, but a lot of them do. Um, so he's done really well, you know, making an impact immediately on the defensive end. And you're seeing his game evolve on the offensive end too, as he's become more of a lead guard. What he didn't play in high school, he played shooting guard in high school more. But with Julian Jacobs gone, you've seen him slide into that backup point guard role so that they can move Jordan McLaughlin uh, to the two guard role. So you've seen him kind of, he's adapting to that role as it goes. And like I said, you're only going to see those guys continue to get better because mm -hmm. you see them in here working all the time. They, they put in a lot of work. Those guys, a lot of those, uh, those two guys, as well as Benny Boatwright, Shemezi Metu, and Elijah Stewart, all played in the Drew League mm -hmm. this summer. And, you know, that's a, you know, a lot of pros come back to play in that and some high end uh, college guys. So it's a very good experience to, uh, to continue to develop their games.
Now you've mentioned Benny Boatwright a couple times. Pac-12 Hoops fans, of course, know that name. It's very familiar. What are some other names that are emerging? Well, Elijah Stewart is a guy who every year you've seen him make some strides. You see his shooting percentages have increased year by year. And this year, you know, they're, they're searching to see if and you see the flashes. You see the flashes all the time. You've seen it. You know, he would have 30 points one game, and then all of a sudden he wouldn't score double digits for four or five games. So this year they're hoping to get more consistent. He's leading the team in scoring right now with over 15 points. He had 30 in the opener. He had 20 in, in a game a couple weeks ago. Um, but you're seeing his game uh, uh, make those strides where he's putting things together better. Uh, one of the things he said when he had 30 points in the opener, I think he got to the free throw line 14, 15 times, was that he watched a lot of players in the offseason, a lot of NBA guys, James Harden, DeMar DeRozan, and how efficient they are scoring because they can get to the free throw line. So he's added that element where he's attacking more. And his outside shooting is only continuing. So he's a guy that has really taken that next step and, and could be a future pro uh, as well as you know a guy like Chemezi Metu is so much athleticism. And you know he showed that last year on the defense man. He was blocking shots, but getting a lot of foul trouble. Mm -hmm. This year he's got a lot more expectations where he's got to be in the game. He's doing a lot better job of staying vertical, not reaching down on guys. And so you've seen just those small things that you've seen from some of those guys, and their their games are only uh, you know uh, taking off from where they were last year. And then Jordan McLaughlin, the heart of the team, the the junior point guard, hasn't really got going offensively, but he's just kind of distributing the ball for everyone else and kind of kind of feeling his way because these guys are still learning. They're learning to play with each other. You know, they're learning you know how the lineups and the coaches are moving the lineups in and out. So you know, they're trying to develop that chemistry and they they play really well together, but they're still trying to figure out who does what best with each other. And a guy that I haven't even mentioned, Shaquan Aaron, a Louisville transfer, sat out last year. Instant offense. The guy can you know can put 15 points up and a half without you know without a blink of the eye. Um, there and he's super long on the defensive end, so you know he can do some of the things uh, to a to a lesser degree as DeAnthony Melton. So they're hoping to continue to build that defensive uh, effort up in him, so that he can stay on the court for the entire game because of how well he can create his own shot and get to the rim. So much knowledge. <laughs> we could talk all night. Thank you so much for Shotgun Spratling. I'm Sandy Charles with FanRag Sports.